Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Fintry and to those of you poor souls who are in the Tinto. Clearly, Kevin Ligo at the Pentland would have sold out as well. Yes. So thank you all very much for coming. And sorry for the overspill. If you need to talk about Kevin, you are indeed in the right place. He is the right man. He's urbane. He's charming. He has a way with words. He's certainly the only TV senior executive who's called this year McTaggart lecturer odious. <laughs> Now, he may not look like a man under pressure, but when he took over as director of TV at ITV six months ago, he inherited ratings at the lowest for two years. Yet, ITV had a profit rating of £900 million. And some of that profit is down to Kevin himself yes. as head of ITV Studios. He spent five years hoovering up TV companies and building a production house with a turnover of a billion pounds. And now he's channel controller. And he's already talked about the performance of some of those companies. Today he talked about that. So what does that mean for the indie sector? We'll be talking about that. We'll be talking about everything from factual entertainment. What is that? Uh, particularly that elusive baking show, cooking show he's looking for. From the love affair that he has with Piers Morgan to the weird and wonderful scheduling and the acquisition of The Voice, a slam dunk hit. Or as Shane Smith would have it, vapid, vacuous shit. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Kevin, welcome to your Meet the Controller session. You are essentially the newest controller of essentially a big station, and it's yes. been a while since you were last here. It's six years. You were director, Channel 4's director of television. Uh, time for your 500 questions, or should that be at another time? Um, does director of TV at ITV better being director of TV at Channel 4? Oh, heavens. <laughs> um, it's very different, uh, and yet spookily familiar. Um, no, I, look, they're different jobs. Uh, the ITV uh, job is a wonderful thing to step into. And I'm very glad I had, you know, a long time, five years at studios to prepare myself for this role. Um, <laughs> no, I think that one saw a view of ITV that perhaps you wouldn't have mm -hmm. known from outside. And um, uh, so, no, the, I, I can't really compare the jobs. Channel 4 is great. This one's going to be great. <laughs> That's what we're going to talk about. Okay. Um, <laughs> Britain's biggest commercial broadcaster. Um, shareholders are kicking. They're, they're very happy. Yeah. Uh, ratings are down. But does Adam, Adam Crozier worry if anyone's watching? He is an inscrutable man. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know if he worries or not. Um, really? I, he, You've never asked him? I, You've never said you're making a shed load of money for our shareholders. No. But look at those ratings. No. He... Um, uh, no, I, we, we, no. Right, okay. So let me just explain uh, to you that, as you know, that we've done away with any kind of human interaction by hands up. Uh, at the um, session this morning, um, the leader's session, there were very few hands up. So I want, there's no hands up in the session. I want lots and lots of app questions. I'll take as many as I can through the whole uh, session. App questions come from with he in here and come from people watching on YouTube. Uh, Kevin has lots of views and lots of things, and I've got lots of things to ask him. He's also going to show us some of his important work, very important work. Yes. So we definitely want as many app questions as possible. Um, as you know now, the way that we are running this is we're asking certain industry people who like to be on the telly what they would ask uh, Kevin Ligo. You've got Shane, have you? What? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. OK, it's a gotcha. We've what? brought him along. Uh. Shane. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's hear, first of all, uh, from Crackett's Elaine Hackett. Hi, Kevin. How are you and your team at ITV going to make ITV a little less posh? Too posh to push. Is it, are you too posh? No, I, I wouldn't have thought. That's the first time I've ever heard that as a criticism of ITV. Um, no, what she's getting at, quite rightly, is we are the, you know, the keys in the name, the broadcaster, um, and we want to appeal to everybody for as much of the time as we possibly can. So um, I really don't know what is Downton a posh programme, therefore not mainstream or something i don't i don't know what she on about um well the, well, well maybe she maybe let me just run a few yeah. past you i as you can tell i'm very working class <laughs> yes. i know i know and you love using big words you used the word byzantine this morning people were so oh, pissed God. from last night they could, did he really say byzantine well that's not that 
unusual a word, is it? I think I use the word iconoclast <laughs> and put it in a Byzantine context. <laughs> So, right, yeah. let's talk about what's posh. Inside Asprey's, Claridge's, Mr Selfridge, you're about to do Lady Colin Campbell's stately homes, you've done Norland Nannies. Right. Is that kind of irony television or is it because you believe that that's what your audience actually loves? I think some of those things they love, if they're good, they love them. Uh, uh, the Lady Seething is a one-off documentary, a strange thing to pick on. Um, I don't think... I don't think making shows about stately homes is a sort of elitist thing. It depends how you do it. Um, so, no, I, 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 I am slightly at last surprised by a question that um, would say that we're too posh. So, I think, uh, no, that's not a worry I wake up to in the morning. And can you relate to the mainstream audience that you're looking for at ITV? And what, I mean, it's the whole thing about the DNA. What is the, what is yeah. the ITV audience? I think so. All my life I've watched it. I, I'm genuinely, people always quite surprised, but I've sort of never missed an episode of Coronation Street in about 50 years, um, sado that I am. But uh, so, no, I think that great heritage, you know, I've been working television forever, and, you know, from Granada and LWT, I think that's the great DNA mix of, of what makes ITV wonderful and distinctive. And um, there's talk of... Uh, you know, a sort of northern sensibility, mm -hmm. and I think there's mm -hmm. some truth in that mm -hmm. from the old Granada days. And I think that's about an honesty. I think it's about, um, you know, we, we joke about heart. You, you, you know, certainly in our dramas, you see that the more successful ones mm -hmm. are definitely sort of more overtly emotional. Mm -hmm. And you can see it through all our programming, whether that's, I don't know, that's north or south or whatever, but it's, um, I think this... Yeah, you, you're desperate to interrupt. No, no, no I'm not no. desperate to interrupt. I'm just breathing. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, I think that we um, are at our best when we're dealing with, you know, real issues of people, real emotion. So it's the emotion of long lost family who you mm -hmm. can't watch an episode of that, not cry at some stage. Um, and I think if we go back to our soaps, I think, that, you know, at their best, they are properly emotional. So, yeah. Well, well, let's um, uh, find out how you are going to win more viewers and win viewers <coughs> back. Um, there will always be a lot of crime-based drama on ITV. There always has been, there always will be. It's a very broad genre in itself. So, you know, from soft marple or midi murders through to some gutting thing, murder, um, it, it, there's a lot in between. And what I loved about the Durrells was a sort of spirit that Simon and I court uh, of a sort of joie de vivre, a family love. Um, it was just, you know, at the end of a, a hard day or the end of a weekend, that was on a Sunday evening, I thought it was the perfect sort of show for a family viewing. Mm -hmm. um, and I was delighted that it's there and we've commissioned it for a few more series. So I think it's just a beautiful example. I mean, who didn't like the Durrells? Don't speak. <laughs> Uh, an app question's come in. If I could wave a magic wand for you, what problem would I fix for you at ITV? Oh, gosh. Actually, I've got trouble with my, uh, my chair leg. Um, <laughs> I, no, I suppose... It's because you're the right demographic. Yeah. You're in know, trouble with your legs yeah. at that age. <laughs> my legs. 60 to 62. No, chair, chair legs. Chair legs. Chair. I thought you were talking about your legs. Um, no, my legs are very nice, thank you. The, <laughs> um, I would... Oh, gosh. Well, look, the task... It's, the, the thing about broadcast is it's sort of an endless job that there's always another problem around the mm -hmm. corner that today's problem you kind of solve and then there's another one and this it's this ongoing thing that makes the job so interesting and such a challenge for us all but the way that you're starting to try and solve that is by bringing in key talent yeah. and uh, your your biggest poach or one of your big poachers uh, was polly hill uh, for drama is she actually finally getting to work she started this week um, but you, the licence fee pair, has been paying for her to sit at home for the last five months. Um, is that, what, do you, what do you make of that? Don't you think, do you think that's a good use of licence payers' money? Uh, that's, that's a question for the BBC. No, I, I don't believe in it. And if somebody was leaving me, I'd you know, wish them well and fuck off and you can start <laughs> tomorrow. I don't want to pay you while you're not working no. here. So um, uh, I wish you started. Anyway, she has started now, which is great. And, and you're right, the, the first thing I wanted to do and the first thing I had to do was get a team around me of people that I thought were the best I could find for these jobs. And, um, and so that's what I've done. And I've gone to some familiar people that I've worked with before and some uh, I didn't know Polly at all <coughs> until now. So, um, and they've 
they're just about all now starting. There's a few more to arrive in Sue Murphy's team, but it's, um, uh, I'm very happy with that. And that, that is the absolute starting point for me, well. because I can't, I'm not going to commission every show and be on every show. And so I need people who uh, I trust and who are sort of like-minded, but happy to argue with me and um, well, help select the shows. So as Jay said, I mean, after the scorched earth policy that you left at Channel 4, yes. my words, not hers, uh, it took her a while to build up her team and now she's seeing that. So mm. have you gone for people when you haven't got them? I mean, what I heard was that a serious amount of BBC commissioners lifted the phone to you when you got the job. Is that true? Oh, shame on you, Kirsty. Um, <laughs> look, I think uh, it was a sign that ITV must be a wonderful place to work, that a lot of people wanted to come, and they did. And yes, some people at the BBC. Also, the BBC is always going through some sort of revolution, and so it's an unsettling place mm -hmm. for, for some. Um, and I think it's, you know, whenever there's a sort of new surge and a new energy, people think, oh, that might be a good place to be. So um, ITV has been quite, you know, has been on a cycle and it's come to the end of that cycle and now it's a new one. So people want to be part of that. But so what, what is Polly? Because she's got less, maybe, has she got less money to play with than she had at BBC? Oh, good heavens, yes. Right. So mm. what are you looking for? What's Polly? What kind of drama? You talk about the emotional heart of drama. Yeah. And I, you're not going to be able to afford much, are you? Well, we, we still make a lot of drama. We'll make, you know, 150 hours or Much something. more then. I mean, more than... I'm saying then you've got, right, you, what you're, she's not going to be able to bring through the pipeline to 2018. You're looking for 2018, 2019 yes. dramas. Yes, yes. And so you're looking for a lot of drama? Yes, because we've always made a lot of drama and hopefully we always will. Now, <laughs> we're on the vicissitudes of a commercial broadcaster, so sometimes, you know, the money pinches. But there's still, we, we're going to need, you know, 150 odd hours of drama every year. I think the, um, the challenge for Polly will be that... Uh, are the best writers in the country working for ITV? We're not, we're not a sort of, like Channel 4, or indeed the BBC, we're not a sort of necessarily a, a slope, a learning slope for people to come through. Mm. So we want the best we can find. We want Sally Wainwright writing for us, Russell T Davis, Kay Meller. The, these are the people that I hope we can entice to come and do their best work here. But mm. alongside that, mm. uh, there's plenty of room and scope. Um, for other writers that are a bit more up and coming, but we're not, we're not in the experimental game. And so, you know, our dramas need to get a, a large audience, and that tends to suggest experience, mm -hmm. um, a track record, people who understand what writing in the mainstream is really all about, and it's very hard, and that's why there aren't that many huge hits. So, so is that why ITV has hedged its bets and brought back Cold Feet? I don't know. I think cold feet. The the there's been a a lack of success. I think everyone would agree in non-genre based programming. So crime and period thrive all over the place on BBC on us. And I think I think this. Um, it's interesting that the highest rating dramas just about on ITV are both quite long in the tooth now. Uh, Doc Martin and Benidorm. They show no yeah. signs really of weakening, but they're not crime. They're fun. They're lovely. They're life enhancing. And I, I think we're in the Durrells, I, mm. in a sense, is part of the new wave of that. And so Cold Feet, I think, was a, a look back at what really d undoubtedly was the sort of leader in this area, and that would have been Cold Feet. And oh. so the idea of bringing it back, which was Peter's, not mine, was, uh, you know, was we, they, they had Would tried. you have done it? I don't know, actually. I don't know. I'm, I'm probably less inclined to reboot things yeah. generally than has been the case. Less but that's, is blankety blank for one off at Christmas. That, then that's obviously a completely different thing. But I, <laughs> I would say that, um, no, there's been a lot of it. And you, you do it with much consideration. Yeah, because what I was going to say was, I mean, all this talk, and, you know, God, you know if, if we talked about millennials once, we've talked about millennials a lot. And if there's one thing that's very hard to find, it is a good relationship drama. Yeah. I remember the first run of This Life. I thought it was fantastic. Mm. It's incredibly difficult to get. If you want to get those, if you want to get that kind of 30s, sure. you're going to have to do something that Cold Feet did all those years ago for millennials. Probably. And we want to try that. I think there have been Are you attempts. looking actively yes, looking no, for no, that? Yes, no, no, Polly will be actively looking for that. I think, 
But, you know, there have been attempts at it on both the BBC and ITV, and we can't quite remember them because they didn't quite work, and they didn't come back. It's a more brutal world. Mm -hmm. We are, you know, I'll try my damnedest because it's kind of my nature to give things a bit of a chance. But on ITV, when things don't work at first, uh, I, I think that the, the received wisdom would be they're not going to work. And I think this would, would lead to why, historically, comedy has never been mm. an enormous part of the ITV peak time output, sit sitcom. And, you know, the BBC and Channel 4 have had much richer heritages mm -hmm. in that because they take a long time to get right and bed in and become part of the nation's psyche. And, and you know, hands up, we haven't uh, found many successful sitcoms over the years on ITV. Well, let's take um, a question on the app. Where is the sixth episode of Coronation Street going to fit the schedule? And with us there for reduced 30 minute factual opp opportunities. Yeah, it's obviously, I'm not going to tell you um, where it's going, but it's going to go in a marvelous place that everyone will be thrilled with. And it's with. going to be a big hammock, is it, for other content? It might be. And obviously, I can't, I can't tell you, it's not going to come in until uh, late, much later next year um, because I wanted to get it absolutely right. Because one thing is for sure, I can't muck about with Coronation Street. It's the most, uh, arguably the most important show on the channel. So an extra episode is great if you're a Coronation Street fan, as I am, but um, it needs to be very carefully handled both in the production sense, mm -hmm. because I can't tell you the complexities of going from five episodes mm -hmm. to six. It's weirdly disproportionate. And I'm very fortunate having Kate Oates, who's the, mm -hmm. the new producer of the street, who has come over from Emmerdale, where they've been making six episodes for uh, several years now. And so it involves quite a change in production. Um, quick question on the app. Do you think Ruby Solomon could pen some great drama for ITV? No. No, Ruby, Ruby Solomon. Oh, I wrote a drama and I called myself Ruby Solomon. Um, and it tanked. It didn't tank. It didn't tank no, at all. it was one of the great dramas of our time. But, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, enough. Yeah. Enough. Okay, we can take now uh, a question uh, from the video wall, and that comes from Head of Documentaries at STV Productions, Mick McAvoy. Hi, Kevin. Hello. How important is Factual going to be in the new ITV schedule, and how do you see it evolving over the next year? Right. So, you know, Factual's doing pretty well on BBC and mm. Channel 4. A bit of a car crash for you? I don't know about a car crash, not been, um, not been our greatest thing. And in, to answer the first part of his question, um, there's going to be more factual um, because it's uh, in, in an era when money is always seemingly tighter, when entertainment and drama seems to cost more, you do there, therefore a bit less of it and factual mm. steps into the breach. Now, last night was a perfect example of a Bake Off starting with 10 million viewers. You know, this is extraordinary factual, can deliver audiences that ITV would be delighted with. And so uh, I think the, as Sue said in her session this morning, you know, the challenge for us is to, is to find returning series. It's, it's so obvious, so please do it. Um, is to find returning shows that we can do at any kind of length that um, are mainstream hits. And, and we need to be looking in, uh, in everywhere, but the traditional successful dramas of, of cookery, of travel, of makeover. I think we haven't got really shows in this area that are great big hits. And it would be, um, it's important for us to get a lot of those going. But so you are looking, I mean, you're you are absolutely fishing for a cooking show, yeah? If I'm not mixing fishing my for a cooking <laughs> show. Um, we, yeah, I mean, not at any price, if you know what I mean, in, in the sense of, only if we find one we like. But I want us to be, to be able to sleep at night that we tried every single producer in the country and looked at every format in the world. And so thought, if every, no. you know, you're, but you just don't think that you've got, I mean, you think you're in the market for it, but you aren't getting the right ideas. No, but we've only just sort of put the, the this word out. out. So, the word um, is out. You want, the word is out. It's baking or cooking or barbecuing or sauteing. What do you want? <laughs> we, we, we won't know until we see it. But it, it's something based, you know, Master Chef, Hell's Kitchen, Bake Off are very different shows, but they're all successful. And so I don't, I, I can't see why ITV shouldn't have a show like one of those that that can do that kind of job and satisfy our audiences and advertisers at the same time. So, um, but that's just one. Honestly, that's just one thing. And there's talent to look at. There's um, formats to go. There's producers to work with. So, the word is out on that, as it is with. 
you know, God, we forget things like Wish You Were Here used to get mm. 10 million views mm. or something. What's the modern um, version of that? Uh, and so forth. So, and we, we are looking at a consumer show. ITV hasn't had a consumer show mm. uh, in living memory. And so, is there a way of doing it? The Martin Lewis Money Show is incredibly successful for us. Mm. And, you know, it's a small show about finance. And you wouldn't have initially thought that could do 4 million yeah. viewers, but it does. And so, we need to... Um, bury ourselves in these areas to find good stuff. So Thursday night, let's talk about Thursday night, it's going to be crime night, yeah? All your big crime what? shows on Thursday oh, night. Um, <clears throat> I thought you meant personally. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, the, I don't know about Thursday, I certainly haven't decided that. I think, I think... But you want to throw the schedules, you want to, do you, I mean, scheduling, is scheduling at, at ITV changing? I mean, you're doing, going to do different things. You know, for example, 500 questions at night, and 500 questions going at another time, no, that's just to sort of fuck up. The, um, uh, no, I think um, the, what we've got to do with the schedule is, is make it a bit more lively and exciting yeah. at the same time as not drying up baby the bathwater, at the same time as f f treating shows in the best way. So when you have a show that you believe in, this has come up in other sessions I, I've seen, it's, you know, it's not only, some really good shows have not worked because they weren't in the right place, they were up against something mm. too big to shift on another channel, um, and so on. And so we've got to be really, really careful with yeah. shows that we believe could be a proper hit for mm. us and a, a show that can run and run for years and years. But you, but you talk about the fact that it's not, you know, generally you're not going to be experimental, or you're talking particularly about drama there, but what, what when you're looking for this alchemy of this extraordinary factual mm. offering and are you prepared to just be quite out there about what you put out in fact yes I think so I, I think the um, but look we're all very experienced professional people who've worked in this area a long time and I we're not going to put something stupid out like Shane suggested so it, it'll be um, uh, it, it's about uh, finding shows that we just believe in we need honestly you know, it's a great opportunity for producers at this point in Indies that we need so much of this programming that we will be trying many, many new shows. But you talk about the fact that it's not factual, it's factual entertainment. Yes, it is, yeah. So, not straight factual, but factual entertainment. Well, I don't know. The, 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 why, why? Well, it's so blurred, the difference. You can call it what you like. It's factual programming that is popular. And that, that can be documentary, that can be observation documentary, it can be fixed rig doc, it can be factual entertainment, it can be a format, it can be all these things. I don't really get hung up on what it's called. We know, we all know what we mean, and it does stretch from uh, Long Lost Family through to, um, uh, it can be a documentary about uh, a single crime or something like this one, we've got the, the killing of Sadie Hartley, uh, the murder of Sadie Hartley, uh, coming up soon, but it can be all sorts of things. And so I, I I'm really, people shouldn't worry about, is it factual, is it fact -tent? I don't know. Is but it... aren't you sending a signal out by changing it to be the, the, the leader in this is fact -tent? and so... As opposed to what, though? Well, if, it's, if it's just factual, it's factual. It's just right. any programme you put on the television yeah. has got to have content which is entertaining. Sure. And I think ent entertainment is, is the key to being part of the ingredient that works for factual on, on ITV. We are... You know, we are unashamedly an entertainment channel, really. Mm -hmm. And so any factual we do... So Long Lost Family is not in any way flip or, or cynical or anything like that, and it's really emotional. But it's also, of course, entertaining. We are entertained by it. And uh, so that's what I mean by that. But it, are we going to do a sort of serious, you know, history of the Byzantine Empire? No, we're not. So in that sense, that sort of what used to be called specialist factual, mm -hmm. I think we're not, we're not so interested in. Now, um, you were also uh, asked uh, for a clip to, from a show that exceeded all your expectations, what's called the surprise hit clip. There's a lot of crime docs all over the place on ITV, and this, uh, at the first sight, looked like another one, but it rated higher than anything. It was pr it's probably, bar the odd sort of royal or Anton Deck-based uh, documentary, the highest... Uh, have you done an Anton Deck deal? You bet we have. Um, Oh, a deal? No, Christ, no. The, um, uh, but with Factual, I think with, with, the, with the Killer Women, I think it was extraordinary you know, access to someone who had committed a murder, who wasn't some sort of um, demonised person. It was peers as a 
an entry point into this and as someone who could, I think because of his American association as well, sort of bridge the Atlantic gap quite naturally and ask questions that, you know, not everybody would ask in a rather sort of typical blunt, effective way. Um, and it was riveting. And they were very well-made films. Mm -hmm. You know, they really were. There was nothing trashy about them. And I, so that's why I thought that's an indication of what can really work on ITV, which is, which, which is about the crime thing, if I, is I think instead of these films often getting lost and you don't know where they are and everything, our thinking at the moment is, is there a sort of strand, a, a bit like in an old-fashioned way, of sort of crime and punishment or something, where we do a 12-week run mm. on in the same place so audiences know exactly where it is and what they're getting, and some of it might be presented, some of it might not, but the whole thing is a kind of... Um, is a strand in the best sense of this and so you know if it's Thursday, I don't know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it, it's, a, it's a place where you know what you're going to get and we deliver wonderful stories told in this way. But uh, for, yeah. for producers in here, you, essentially, if they want to make an offer on crime or whatever mm. and it's about talent, do they just have to sign Piers Morgan up for everything? I wouldn't do that. Because um, you said yourself, talking about modern day crime shows, is it rhetorically, is it through Trevor McDonald and Piers Morgan? But the answer to that rhetorical question now appears to be yes. No, I don't. They do some, honestly. They probably, I mean, in crime, Piers has done three, three hours out of, I don't know, 50 hours. So I, I think both Piers and Trevor have, you know, more Trevor, I would say, because of the longevity of his association with ITV and his sort of stateliness, that he does do really well. But it's not disconnected with the fact that he's made really good shows when he goes into American prisons or mafia women or whatever it is. And it's somehow Trevor, you know, is, is, is our conduit into this strange world. Um, and Piers has done a bit of that as well. So I just think, I think the point is shows can be presenter-led, but they don't have to be. There is European data that's uh, looked at the kind of algorithm of the kind of shows oh. that would do very well for ITV. <laughs> and essentially, uh, there are shows presented by Joanna Lumley about dogs that have a reunion. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Yeah. So this is for the audience, actually. Please app in with uh, your ideal celeb journey. Uh, you know, Jeanette Cranky Goes to the Kremlin was one that we right. had from one of our producers. There was no... I tell you, when I came and I was looking at all the ideas, um, there was an idea which was, I think, the second worst idea uh, after Monkey Tennis in <laughs> the Alan Partridge show when he, when he ends up going, Monkey Tennis. And it was Joanna Lumley in search of the lost Ark of the Covenant. And... <laughs> I'm not joking, I saw it on a piece of paper and I thought, no, surely we haven't gone that far. But no. Um, All right, well, let's. Let, if she let, could find it, I'll commission it. Uh, mm. let, let me just check on these. Here's one. <clears throat> Does the failure of 500 questions prove the entertainment can't play in midweek primetime or is it just a bit shit? Oh, nice. Shame on you. People it, did, very it did drop mass. It did drop. It, yeah, but it, you know, inheritance from what was it, Coronation Street at two point five million went down to one point nine million. I don't know. It 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 was a show that has been around a while. It's been on the, the series or two in America. I think it was an attempt at, you know, people look back at Millionaire and and they were glory days of ITV and Who Wants to Be a Millionaire was a fantastic show. And lots of people have tried to copy it and, you know, just to show how difficult it was to get it right in the first place. And I think this was another one of those. And it just looked to me a bit, a bit derivative, to be mm. honest. It sort of mm. felt and smelt a bit like that. And I watched it when I came in and I found it quite hard to follow it. Hang on, triple play action, what? <laughs> um, so, but, you know, it was worth a go. And I thought Giles was good. And um, it, it hasn't, I don't know, it hasn't finished yet. Let's wait till it's all gone out. Um, but there's no recommission. Let's wait till it's all gone out. So there's no recommission. So, um, playing entertainment midweek, mm. that's a big thing. Yeah, I think, again, I suppose, again, that's the shift from um, Paul O'Grady with Dogs is just entertainment. Um, but this it would be, I think, a bit more midweek, traditional, all shiny floor type entertainment in all its mm. ways. And so... Um, but we've always, ITV's always done that from, you know, the Des O'Connor show, which you sit there for years, to uh, we, do, we do the midweek Palladium mm. show for some time now uh, with success. I think 
I think it's bringing a flavour and some new people in the entertainment to, to the viewers and through our channel, which, so for example, we've got um, Harry Hill, it seemed to me, you know, TV Burt was a wonderful ITV show. It was one of the few pure comedy shows that worked really well on ITV, and Harry is a particular, peculiar, wonderful talent that um, we wanted to keep hold of. I certainly did, and so um, we've, we've made a number of pilots with mm -hmm. Harry, trying to find the right show, and I hope we found it now. So we've commissioned a panel show, uh, which will be pre-Watershed, with Harry, which is sort of crazy Harry's sort of badger-filled world, um, that uh, is an example of the sort of thing that I hope we can do more of. It seems to me that what you want to do with scheduling is, you know, the ITV audience always strikes me more than other audiences of an audience that kind of sits and plans out what they're going to watch. And what you're going to do is you're going to give them a bit of a shot in the arm. I, I don't... I don't know. I hadn't thought of it like that. I don't think there is such a thing as an ITV audience. I, I think there is an audience that we want everybody, and everybody does watch a bit of ITV at some stage. Mm. I think there's a, a thing I don't particularly like and a slightly banned saying about the ITV audience, that there's this assumption that there's kind of the people that watch the soaps. Mm. That's ITV mm. audiences, and we just keep them. And that's not the case, because um, there are a huge amount of people, obviously, that watch the soaps, mm. but there's a huge amount of people that don't. Mm -hmm. And we need to appeal to them. It's very important for advertisers. It's very important for the whole feeling of the channel that um, what we put out when it's not a soap is um, of interest to everybody. Now, uh, you famously can Big Brother. You're not afraid of canning things that you mm. don't think work. Um, the app here says, are you the man to finally say enough mm. is enough and pull the plug on X Factor? No, I'm not that man. You're not that um, brave. No, Al X Factor is still a wonderful show. It's an enormous hit. I think there's a, it's a curious thing about entertainment, you know, that um, I don't think 10, 11 years ago, whenever X Factor and Brits Got Talent people started, they th people really thought about how long they would run for. They just made a great show. It was a monster hit. Hurrah. But you know what? It's really been proven that these shows can last, can run and run and run. And most of the high rating shows on all networks have been around a very long time. And so I think we, that's a good thing and we embrace that. And part of the reason I've restructured the way that, say, Sh Shu Green is, is, is really looking after mm. a lot of those long running shows. And her job, and my job to a certain extent, is to hand those over, when I'm fired for saying the wrong thing, um, is to hand those shows on to the successor in five, six, whenever it is, years time, because they, they come along so seldom that it's important that we keep them alive and keep them good and keep them at a high level. And but but anything, how are you going to refresh X Factor? I mean. Because, well, you know, there's such a criticism. It's a show that gets eight, nine million viewers. It's, it's fine, thank you very much. I wish I had more problems like the X Factor. <laughs> I, you know, it, it is, we will, we need to work at it. And I think a new team can do that with new relationships and energy. And Shoe Green used to produce it. Mm -hmm. She's been away from it a few years. Now she can come in and say, hey, what about this? This series, which launched, there was a launch today, actually press launch today, starts this weekend, is um, we kind of then gone back to basics and Dermot's back and uh, it's, it's three familiar judges and all the rest of it. We've stepped to the old format and I'm sure that's a good idea because it's a winning, brilliant format. So, so I, I think it's important, honestly, that I, I think we'll look back at, at uh, this moment in ITV's time as the sort of the golden era of entertainment, honestly. The Voice, The Voice, Kids, X Factor, Britain's Got Talent, I'm a Celebrity. You know, these are huge shows in the modern world that have proved incredibly so, resilient. So why did the BBC not do well with The Voice? And why did the BBC... It did OK. Do you know, honestly, it did OK. I think, I think it's maybe intrinsically more of a sort of BB, uh, ITV show. So is it more that there's a kind of ITV stardust that can be sprinkled in these kind of shows? Maybe. I, d I don't know. I think it was a good show. It did rate highly. I mean, let's not, you know, it, d it did really well. I, I, it was very tough for us to launch shows against it, you know. And I think when Dancing on Ice was cut of four or five, whenever it was, mm. years ago, because it was felt, oh, we need to refresh, it's, it's going down. Yes, it's gone down a bit in the ratings. But, you know, nothing that we've done has achieved those numbers that Dancing on Ice was doing. And I think, I think sometimes, you know, we TV types can get 
bored a bit more quickly of shows yeah. than an audience can. And there was, I, I, you know, I'll be honest, I hadn't watched Dancing on Ice until I came to ITV and it was series four or five or whatever it was. So I didn't really know what it was. I watched it. It was the most lovely family show and a really good feeling and distinctive and brilliantly produced. And actually, I wish it had gone on a bit longer. So does that mean, because you now have got to do a Saturday Night Takeaway, yeah. everything else, you've got a whole list. Does that mean you are not now looking for more Saturday Night Entertainment shows. No, because I'm a greedy bastard, and uh, you can never have enough. I also think... So what, what, it, I no, mean, no, what no, no, let's no, stick what on this. Yeah, yeah what, what we're you're lacking, for. Yeah. I would say, is shows that go before the meat in the sandwich of Saturday night and after it. So earlier evening, what works well, where TV Burke was, where Ninja Warrior has done really yeah. well. I think there is incredible opportunity here for um, slightly cheaper, though properly funded entertainment that's more fa always family uh, aim but sort of at six o'clock seven o'clock before those big juggernauts appear and then after them what do we play after that because they're often over by nine o'clock nine thirty yeah. something like that it's too it's too early to give up so what shows would Versailles best I just follow? put Versailles out there all the time you know that's, that's awful so what, <laughs> what I just meant there'd be sex that was all yeah well it could be the um yeah so, if anybody is thinking about what to yep. make, it is genuinely those shows that would sit well after those very big, raucous, you know, enormous, e emotional kind of rides of those talent shows and the rest of it. Because um, I don't think we've found exactly the right thing mm. yet. So, f finding something that can sit there would be a very valuable thing for us all. Right, well, let's uh, go on to our next question. And at this time, it's from Katie Lander from Fine Strike Productions. Hi, Kevin. If I brought an idea or a format to you and you had a similar one from one of your ITV production companies, you'd obviously go with them because you don't own the IP on it. And I understand that. But what incentive is there for me to bring my best ideas to ITV? OK, now look, I have to say that a lot of questions are coming in on this in the app. Indies are worried. If you liked a production company, you would have brought them. Will everything be in brought ITV them. studios? Um, you know, you've got a big beast to feed in that, you know, you've got all these mm. companies. If somebody brings a similar format, what would you do? Bit who's, who do we like the best? Which one came first? They won't ever be quite the same, so it's in the making of it. Who do we think would do it best? I think there's... Um, there's no question that, I mean, most of our entertainment is not made by in-house, similar with drama. Um, so there's, there's we, we want the best ideas. And I would say, I would say to producer Y ITV, oh, never ever assume that somebody's not gonna like your idea. I mean, you, you must assume we will want to do it. And there's probably no better platform in the UK the, for entertainment shows than ITV. If you get a show on ITV, you almost certainly will get it away elsewhere around the world. But and so it's a wonderful showcase. And um, I know from my days running studios, you, you need a show on these main channels in order to uh, get the sales you need to help build your business. But are you seriously saying to me that I mean, you, you, you want all these acres of factual programming, but yeah. you've also got these production companies. They'll be the ones that will be surely <laughs> It tapped up before the rest of the indies because you have to feed them. We don't, honestly, we don't have to feed them. And when you're in those, I promise you, you really feel you don't get, you ask them, they don't feel they get a particularly easy ride from uh, ITV, the, the broadcaster. So it, it, I, I, I completely accept that it look, can feel a bit like that from the outside. And a yes, of course, the holy grail is a show comes from in-house that we own and control, pitch, we love it, we make it, it's a hit, we take it around the world, we make all the money, we control it. Of course, but that isn't the case. Look, look at all the shows we've been talking about, all the clips of the shows I've shown today are all made by independents. And that's not, that's by luck, it's not by design. And so I think there's still, we spend hundreds of millions of pounds with the independent sector, we always will, it's vital for the broadcaster to survive and be successful. So I don't see, I think there's a lot of opportunity, particularly in the areas we've been talking about today, of entertainment and, and factual. I think Do there's enormous scope. You, know, you say you're looking for big ratings, you want more ratings yeah. in factual, obviously, especially in factual. But to get those figures up, does that mean working particularly with big companies, do you think? No, I, d I don't really uh, have a view, and I think certainly the history of hits will tell you they usually come from somewhere you couldn't have um, spotted. So I, 
No, I think you work, there's no doubt that commissioners and producers sort of get on with some people better than others and works both ways. And work tends to beget work because yeah. you're in more constant dialogue um, with commissioners and, and everything. But, and you sort of, you get closer to the daily changing feel of what people want on the channel. Um, and that's important. But no, we, we make, we have shows with people who just do one show at all and they're on our channel and, and obviously with great big companies like Fremantle and all three. Um, seriously, the one thing about not having hands up and having the app is that people feel free to be a bit ruder, which is quite interesting. How few people have to watch Good Morning Britain before you run the test card instead? <laughs> um, <laughs> Good Morning Britain is fine, actually, ratings-wise now. It's, it's, you know, there, it, it has been the problem child since GMTV mm. stopped. And, but I think now, with uh, Susanna and Piers, essentially, it's, it's in really good shape. And it isn't going down. It's staying where it is. And it's commercially viable. And it's a good show. Mm. And it, it's just really hard to expect to get, you know, the sorts of audiences we did 15 years ago on these shows. So, honestly... There was a time when Good Morning Britain was a real issue and the whole building was like, oh my God, what are we going to do? And that is not the case now. It's a, um, it's, it's a good show. I think it's, you know, it's not the butt of people's jokes. Mm. That's a very old joke, whoever said that. And um, I think it's a good show if you watch it. Uh, on the app, we're getting tons and tons of the same question. And it is, do you want Bake Off on ITV itself? Oh, see, the, what, the very show. The very I, I prefer EastEnders. You know, four million these days is a really good rating and you if you made a show that got four million at any time because that probably goes pre watershed so uh, actually even three three and a half these days is is good right. i do there's an interesting thing going on with ratings and particularly in drama that to be honest we're feeling our way through which is that the, there's a tendency for dramas to get below five million viewers now on the overnights and I think we're still looking a bit with uh, a historical perspective on what drama should get. And I, I really don't know the answer at the moment, but there's something going on because, you know, there was a big launch of a BBC drama on Monday night. It was called One of Us, and it was a murder thing mm -hmm. by the Williams boys that wrote it. It was good. It was probably good. It had some stars in it. Nothing against it. If I call it, it was 500 questions. I'm sorry to lean on that show. But, you know, it had a, it had a nice... There was, own, there was no drama against it, let's put it that way. And um, yet it was only 4.2 million viewers or something. And I, I... You know, we've had this with... Mm. We had a show called Home Fires earlier in the year that we didn't continue with. And there was a lot... It was a real angsty decision because it was a good show. But it was, it was in that 4.5 million on the overnights. And you think, we're spending £800,000 an hour yeah. on this stuff. And it should do better. I'm... I'm going to watch very carefully from now on yeah. what shows do on BBC One and ITV in, in ratings terms because I think, I'm not saying they're gone, but even Downton, our biggest drama sort of ever, was sort of 8 million by the end. And if that's the sort of freak end of the hit, mm -hmm. then maybe we need to slightly reassess what, what a hit is in drama. Well, that, I was going to ask about that because what you've uh, taken on uh, is um, Victoria. Yeah. Who, of course, you know lived a very long time. She did. So, presumably, you're not going to kill her off at whatever it is, 35. I mean, you've started no. this, so you're going to have to finish it. Well, you, know, you, you, you keep going as long as it's working and, and the team have got a good idea of what the next series will be. That'll but be the next six years, then? Hopefully, yes. But we'll have to see. I mean, uh, so, you know, not even, how many series were Downton? I don't know. But, it, but I think with Victoria, look, it starts in two days' time or something. Uh, we'll soon know. Uh, by, you know, in six weeks, we'll know what we really think about mm. it, what it feels like on the channel going out, how people have responded to it, how well it does, and, and everything else in the round. And, you know, we're confident it's going to be good. And we can take one final question from the video wall. It comes from RDF Managing Director Jim Allen. But he's lost all his hair. Kevin. Entertainment shows are increasingly bought on overseas formats that have already aired, and yet the biggest entertainment hits are uh, Britain's Got Talent, I'm a Celebrity, Strictly, basically homegrown British ideas. So my, I suppose my question is, is what's wrong with the British entertainment idea sold and bought off paper? 
He has turned into Al Murray, hasn't he? <laughs> um, or, or Alf Garnet, uh, yeah. without the racism, no. obviously. But, um, no, he's absolutely right. The best thing is homegrown entertainment. Yeah. Most of our entertainment is homegrown. I don't think we tend to take that many formats. Most formats travel outwards from us once they've been on ITV. So, um, no, absolutely, I would prefer, mm -hmm. in most instances, Little Big Shot's an exception, mm -hmm. um, to have uh, homegrown stuff. So, on the, on the Little Big, you're not... Will you actively now say that you've got little big shots that you won't take another American no, format? No, You'll I never say I that. No, no, no. Of course we would. If we well, let me just. There's a few questions coming in. I know we've only got a couple of minutes. So I want to make sure I've got them. Uh, why haven't ITV found a sitcom that works well for them? What does a sitcom and ITV need? I'll ask you that one right. first, and then I'll go on to the next one. The sitcom's really difficult. The, you know, the BBC's struggling. I think. I, I think. Um, it, as I said before, it, they need time. They've always needed time. I remember. Um, when Only Fools and Horses first came out, there was a reviewer who couldn't resist the joke of only a fool or a horse would watch this crap, and how wrong they were. I think, I think our soaps, particularly Coronation Street, have a role in this, a sort of unintended consequence of more hours, more half hours, more episodes of soaps, where Coronation Street, if any of you watch it, and you should because it's really good, is genuinely very funny at times. It's mm. really quintessential sitcom kind of material. It's character-based, funny stuff m performed by characters that you've got to know over a long period of time. And both the spread of the amount of episodes, that's 12, that will be 12 episodes a week in five days of Emmerdale and Corey, mm -hmm. Um, have taken up a lot of the slots, but they also feed the soul's need for comedy based on character, which can be warm, which in, in isolation on paper wouldn't look funny, but coming from these characters, it genuinely is. So we will try. I, I have commissioned a um, sitcom with Jack D, mm -hmm. uh, which will arrive sometime late <laughs> next year. And we went to a run through and a pilot. It was really funny and it was great. It was, um, uh, and so. We will continue in this area, but we have got to be careful because so few have worked. Right, now I've got a few questions coming in here. Let me, I know we've only got a couple of minutes. Having failed to find much of an audience for Beowulf and Jekyll and Hyde, is ITV giving up on tea time fantasy drama? There aren't any um, coming through to my knowledge that I know about. I think it's a, um, I still think the theory of it is nice. And in my dreams, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. on a Saturday, the reason they came about is quite curious. The, there was a feeling that, that, that the entertainment on a Saturday and, and maybe a Sunday night was so long from sort of 5.30 through to 10.30 and it was all roaring applauding crowds in pink and mm. blue white lights and stuff and, and the idea that you would find something a bit like Merlin was in its peak or Robin of Sherwood or whatever the latest iteration of Robin Hood was would, would be a nice sort of change yeah. in the mix of sort of just another howling audience. And so that was partly how they came about. There's also a international appetite for it. So as far as studios were concerned, that sort of thing is, can be very uh, profitable as a business. But those shows didn't work for all their different reasons. And at the moment, we're not, we're not there. But I wouldn't ever say n n never, because in a perfect world, if we had a lot more money, I think you would definitely want to get some Too shows sure. like that. Primeval was the last one that mm -hmm. worked on ITV quite a few years back now. You've been in the job six months. Is it tougher than you thought it would be? Um, no, not really. It's, um, it's always difficult because there's always a challenge. And I think that what's rather refreshing about ITV is that there is a black and white thing about success. There's, you know, running public service channels, as I have done, you can, you can hide a bit with, oh, yes, but it was very important work. And all that, or yes, it won a fucking BAFTA. Who cares if you won a BAFTA? I, I think for us, it is about, has it reached a wide audience that, that satisfy our ratings, which satisfy our advertisers and therefore keeps us all in business? But do you think on that basis then, that you've got those, you've got to, you, know, you satisfy your advertisers, you satisfy the shareholders, do you think being sort of non-experimental is going to work for the next generation? I, I, honestly, I would not, if I said non-experimental, that's not what I meant. I think right. we're, not, we're not kind of out there on the fringes. I think everything we try is new and different and in our minds and, and good. I, so I just think, you know, to expect three, four, five, nine million people to come to a show, it's not, it's unlikely to be a sort of beautifully crafted niche little thing that, you know, you might see on BBC Two late at night or something. So it, that, it's that broad sweep. It's something that would appeal 
I think for producers, and this is the most important thing, is you've got to honestly ask yourself if you would sit down and watch this whenever it's on the telly. And often producers don't do that. They sort of second guess, don't second guess, obviously enter into a dialogue with the commissioners. But, you know, it's about in the end, it'll only work if you really believe in it. And every show we've got that works tends to be born out of some genuine, annoying passion uh, are from producers and writers. And, and so nothing called the Great British Anything ever anymore. The, no, probably not. I don't know, depends. But oh. no, there isn't, I don't think there's a Great British thing. And coming. how long before ITV sold? How long do you think? Oh, it, we, we're hoping by next week. Um, <laughs> I, no, I mean, ITV is, you know, a wonderful company now. Honestly, it is genuinely well run. As you say, 900 million, whatever it is, profit. It's an extraordinary British success story. Now, not as dependent on advertising as it used to be, uh, with a big studio arm that's very successful. And um, we should sort of glory in the fact that ITV is in such rude health, because it enables us, one, to keep spending all these sorts of money on programming and maintain our investment in things like news that we haven't really talked about tonight, mm. but so important at this, this time, um, that ITV success is great. And it sits uh, side by side with the BBC. I've got a few questions here, a bit random from what are, are kind of finessing towards the end, but I'll just ask you one of them. Um, uh, Little Big Shots, The Voice, Kids, don't you feel that you're saturating the market for your other shows such as BGT? No. Fine. Good. Um, let me just get another one. Uh, you've changed your key positions in your commission team, which we have discussed, yeah. but what wasn't working? Uh, well, as you say, the ratings were challenged. Yep. I think that we, the, you know, honestly, there is no blame to anybody. I think that you, you can't stay in commissioning jobs for that mm. long because you, you give it your all and you need to refresh and change. And it's always a, when do you do that? And it's an awkward moment, all the rest of it. So that change has happened. Um, and I think, as we've said, Actually, ITV is in pretty rude health. You know, the, the, honestly, the bedrock that is the success of our daytime shows, and we don't talk about The Chase and Tipping Point, these are, these are massive hits now for us. And so daytime, the soaps are this God-given gift that we must never take for granted and are the most important things on the show. Would you like another Saturday soap? Night, Saturday night entertainment. Honestly, we, you know, I, I think the worst thing would be if I didn't have all these Saturday night mm. because trying to find new Saturday night juggernaut is the hardest job in telly and we've got all these great shows so that so the bedrock is there which enables us to think right we we, ha we can without sinking the business try new things mm. experiment with new people bring in new producers and genuinely try and sort of excite the channel rip open the schedule a little bit where we can to to continue ITV's success Okay, we've had uh, one celebrity journey in, so I want to know if you commission this. Nigel Farage goes to the North Pole and doesn't come back. Ah. <laughs> Probably on a husky. That would do it. Yes. So there's no reunion in that one, but there yes. is a celebrity. Yes. And there is a journey. Yeah, we wouldn't do that. We wouldn't do that. Kevin Ligo, thank you very thank much. You and thanks to the sponsors broadcast. Well done. Thank you.